Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice trigonometric equation with tangent. We have tangent x divided by 1 minus tangent squared x, and that is equal to square root of 3 divided by 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So my first method is going to be a little bit more brute forcey, and the second method will be more elegant, okay? So to solve this problem, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply because this problem, this is, we're given ratios, so it makes sense to cross multiply. Let's multiply 1 minus tangent squared by square root of 3, which gives us square root of 3 minus square root of 3 times tangent squared x equals 2 times tangent x, which is 2 tangent x. Now let's go ahead and put uh, tangent squared on the positive side, which is going to give us square root of 3 tangent squared x. And we're going to add it to this plus 2 tangent x. And then we're going to bring this over with the minus sign. And notice that we have 0, but the sides have switched. Make sense? <laughs> okay. Get used to this because it's not always, uh, things aren't always on the left hand side. Now we got a nice equation. You know why? because it's quadratic. And we can solve quadratic equations thanks to the quadratic formula. There's a cubic formula, there's a quintic formula. No, not really. I mean the quartic formula, but that's super duper long and complicated. It doesn't really fit anywhere, but I believe on Wikipedia, if you search for it, you'll find one. It's huge. And there's no quintic formula, okay? Let's make it clear. Now, to solve this, let's go ahead and use substitution because it makes things a little easier and ourselves. So let's go ahead and call this t. So now we have square root of 3 t squared plus 2 t or not 2 t. If you're a tutor, then you'll have two t's like me because I tutor in math, by the way. And anyways, that's our equation in t. So if you don't like t and you like coffee better, you can also use coffee as your variable. But t is easier, in my opinion. And I like t. Anyways, to solve this, let's go ahead and set it up with the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared for minus 4ac. That'll be plus because of the negative c. Uh, c is negative. And 4ac is going to give me 4 times 3, which is 12. Nice. I get a perfect square, which is nice. The answer will be really cool. Square root of 16 is 4, so I can write this as negative 2 plus minus the square root of 16, which is 4, divided by 2 root 3. Obviously, everything can be divided by 2, so t becomes negative 1 plus minus 1 divided by root 3. Of course, we're going to simplify this a little bit more. Like, for example, if we use the plus sign, t is going to be 0. Uh-oh. And then if we use the minus sign, t is going to be negative 2 over root 3. Or negative root 3. I should probably write it this way negative 2 root 3 divided by 3, if we rationalize the denominator. Wait a minute, I think we made a mistake because I don't think 0 is a solution to this, is it? I don't think so. I don't know how I got 0 though, I gotta check my work. So let's go ahead and erase this and start over. I probably made a mistake somewhere. Let's start fresh. Okay, now t from here is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 minus plus for a c that's going to be a 3 and then we divide it by 2 root 3. So this is 4 plus 12 16 negative 2 plus minus 4. I probably made a mistake somewhere I can't remember but yes when you divide everything by 2 you get negative 1 plus minus 2 I probably put a plus minus 1 there uh, root 3 and now this should give us the following values t can be uh, 1 over root 3 which is root 3 over 3, and the other t value is going to be negative 3 over root 3, which is negative root 3, because root 3 times root 3 is 3, right? Cool. So we got two t values, and t represents tangent x. So we can go ahead and set these equal to tangent x, and then try to solve for x each time, right? For example, if tangent x is equal to root 3 over 3, think about it. That's a special triangle, right? It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is 30 degrees. This is 60 degrees, and that's 90 degrees. If this is 1, that hypotenuse will be twice, and this will be root 3 from Pythagorean theorem, right? So 
tangent is going to be root 3 over 3. Uh, in other words, if theta is 30 degrees. So tangent 30 degrees is 1 over root 3, which you can write as root 3 over 3. So from here, we basically get x equals 30. But guess what? We, we're going to write it in radian form. And that's going to be pi over 6. And of course, we're going to add multiples of pi to it because that's the period for the tangent function. Does that make sense? With sine and cosine equations, we add 2 pi n. It has to be a multiple of 2 pi because that's where the period is. But notice that with tangent, uh, we have two angles whose tangents are equal and they're separated by pi radians. Make sense? I hope it does. First and third, second and fourth quadrants basically work like that. And the same period goes for cotangent, of course. So we got one solution, which is this one. And let's go ahead and find the other one from negative root 3. We've got to be a little more careful here. First, think about where tangent would be positive root 3. That would be 60 degrees or pi over 3, right? But you kind of have to put this in the second quadrant so you can make the tangent negative. That's how I usually do it. So 60 degrees gives me positive root 3 on the tangent, by the way. If you're trying to see what tangent looks like, you have to go like this but then you kind of have to do the opposite. So if this is 60 degrees, this is 180 minus 60, which is 120, or you can look at it as pi minus pi over three, which is two pi over three. So in other words, this will be two pi over three, but again, we have to add multiples of pi. But do you want to use the same variable? Not necessarily, you can use k, so that n and k are independent. Make sense? Okay, so those are our solutions. And if you want solutions between 0 and 2 pi, just replace n with 0 and then n with 1, and that'll be it. Because if you replace n with 2 or k with 2, then you'll get something greater than 2 pi. And same thing goes for negative solutions. Make sense? Okay, great. So that was the first method. And let's go ahead and talk about the second method now, because I think that you're going to love the second method. But again, I could be biased because I came up with the formula or I'm not the formula, I mean, I came up with this problem, sort of. I've seen it before, but anyways, um, you may like the first one better. So let me know what you think. So when you look at a problem like this, you should definitely be very familiar with the trigonometric identities. And if you do know what I'm talking about, tangent 2x or 2 theta to alpha, there's a formula for that, which is called the double angle formula. There's a one for sine, one for cosine, and one for tangent. You don't have to worry about the reciprocals because you can easily use reciprocals for them, right? Don't need to memorize. But you should definitely know these. And where they come from, uh, we have tangent uh, alpha plus beta formula. And if you replace both alpha and beta with x, you get tangent to x. And where does this formula come from? Sine alpha plus beta over cosine. And then you can draw a triangle and so on and so forth. Anyways, to keep a long story short, this is tangent to x. And when you look at something like this, you probably realize, realize uh-oh, this looks familiar to me, yay. So here's what we can do. All we need is a missing two. The two is missing, so what should I do? Multiply both sides by two. When you do, you'll get something amazing. The twos will cancel out, and this will become tangent two x equals root three, and you probably know that, we already talked about it, right? This is the same as tangent pi over three, and then from here, you can basically write the solutions as 2x equals pi over 3. Uh-oh. Some type of static, I guess. Again, uh, pen acting up. Okay. 2x is equal to pi over 3. Sometimes I touch the metal and it solves the problem, but it doesn't always solve the problem. Anyways, I'm going to give it a quick try. Uh, allow me to finish this up real quick, hopefully. Just bear with me. 2x equals pi over 3 plus pi n, but then we're going to divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give us x equals pi over 6 plus pi times uh, n over 2, or pi n over 2, whatever. You can write this in so many ways, but when you replace n with 0, 1, 2, 3, you're going to get four values, which are the same ones as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.